So, um, the video that you have just seen, can you hear me very well? No. No? No? I will hold it. So the reason uh, why I have uh, prepared this video was um, to show you um, the people that I've worked with and I lived with before I started to talk about them. I wanted uh, to transmit at least a little bit of emotion and uh, the atmosphere of the place and of those people. And uh, I'm not going to talk those people, those people. They call themselves Benjele as uh, Jerome has uh, explained at the beginning. And um, um, they are hunter-gatherers and they live in uh, uh, Congo Basin. This, my research was done in, uh, um, in uh, Congo Brazzaville. Um, I don't know if everyone can see where is it. So it's in Central Africa. And I have been uh, staying most of my time in the uh, Likwala department, which is on the north, on the border of Central African Republic and Democratic Republic of Congo. And the, the, main, the main place where I had uh, stayed was called Jube, where most of the videos that you have seen, uh, which were, they, were made, they were made over there. Um, Yeah, so the area of, uh, of, of this village, which is called Jube, is um, alongside the river Motaba. When you look back at the map, um, the Motaba River, I don't know if, uh, if the chain will allow me. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, to get to this village, you, you cannot use uh, a road transportation, there is no roads. So the only way yeah, you can get there is either through the forest walking or uh, by the river. And this area of the river uh, makes, well, it, because it is on the river, it has its special atmosphere and also its uh, special way of living. On these pictures, you can see that the village is, um, um, you know, Mm, were um, built on uh, alongside the river on the second picture you can see the the canoes uh, there was this uh, public transport every every week at least once a week here you can see one benjele uh, from one of the villages uh, with um, um, the, we call them within the literature farmers or the village people so um, it is common to, uh, for the hunter-gatherers to live alongside the farmers, farming populations. And in Jube, in my locality, it was with the Mondongo, Mondongo farmers. Uh, they speak different languages and they have quite complex uh, relations. It, um, it ranges from friendship to hatred. It's very complicated and I will be, <laughs> I will be repeatedly coming uh, back to this topic as well. Um, so, um, Jerem already has um, introduced me very well, so I'm not going to spend much time talking about myself, but uh, you can call me Dasha. Um, now I will go back to some of the, uh, some of the moments from the, from the video, because the, even though it wasn't clear what was the story behind as to what it, 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 it could uh, appear as if yes, it didn't make any sense, but it made sense and I will explain why now. So. Um, from an Benjali perspective, laughter, joking, smiling, enchanting activities are all uh, pleasing to the forest. And these activities either are the ideal activities one can engage in. And it is because it, is, um, it has uh, impact on economic production and on uh, well-being of the group. For example, if we if we laugh, if we dance, and if we are nice to each other now, then we are going to have more luck in finding food. At least all the forest will provide for us, or will open for us. Um, on the other hand, um, on the other hand, if we do not uh, behave nicely to each other, if uh, children cry, and if uh, we are uh, engaging in disputes and fights, in creates uh, so-called noise. <laughs> but uh, if you look at, for example, Ajambo is, uh, is uh, contributing to the well-being of the group. He was cleaning. 
uh, he was doing something nice, he was soothing um, another uh, baby. Uh, there were people engaging you know, beautiful, sexy dances. It is all Mm, these are all really good uh, and enchanting and good activities that um, secure. Can I have a little bit of water, please? I'm sorry. <laughs> so, all such actions are um, needed for, for the well being of the group. Um, I didn't uh, record uh, that much of uh, children's crying and beating at disputes, but I have tried to just s sort of um, mm, you know to spend at least a little bit of time in that video to show that it it uh, does happen. And the Benjele call it uh, noise. So all kinds of actions that are. Uh, even non-noisy bad actions are noisy. For example, cheating on one's wife is a form of noise. Here, is, here are some words how they um, refer to uh, noise. There is also some French words um, oh, and Lingala words. Uh, it is uh, Congo is a form of French colony and Lingala is a lingua, lingua franca of the area. So. That, that corresponds with what uh, Jerome said before, that uh, Benjayaka, their language is very flexible. And, and, but basically they have a word for uh, this disorder or noise that uh, is referred to actions that are actually even silent. But how to deal, if, if violence, if disputes, if all this kind of, if, if fighting and if complaining is, is uh, a form of noise, how to resolve a noise. How to deal with a guy who is uh, cheating on his uh, wife? The answer is to ridicule him. And Benjele have, uh, have, have their own uh, cultural institution of ridicule, which is called Moajo. In, uh, in uh, li uh, the literal meaning of the word is a state of doing something with the bodies. It means that um, that someone is using his or her body to um, do something with it. <laughs> um, first, uh, uh, Jerome Lewis was the first one who started to, uh, who explored Moajo, and um, he has defined it as female public mocking events, where um, uh, especially women, but a man can also do that. Uh, women reenact somebody else, somebody, someone's um, inappropriate or wrong or silly actions. And uh, they repeat this performance until uh, they see that uh, the person starts to laugh. So until uh, there is some sort of transcendence or some kind of real realization. Um, uh, here are some, uh, some comments of my informants. Oh, in how they um, refer to to Moaja, uh, Moaja fedia mendo ma batuna miso, uh, which means that uh, Moaja brings uh, brings the issues of people on public. So, for example, if I would like to try to hide now that um, I did something really bad outside of doors, then somebody I don't know, Chris has seen me and he would start to repeat what I did. Then I, that that would be Moajo, for example. It would make public something what I have tried to hide or I would wish would be hidden. Moajo adienan um, dunga. Moajo adienan dunga. Moajo is sharp, is with sharpness because it uh, pierces your heart the way uh, the ridicule can sometimes be. It, it just points right to the uh, to the, the weakest point. Um, and the third one, and I will repeat to this issue uh, later in the, uh, during the presentation, is uh, that uh, is Moajo Akana Mayele Mona Mosuku. It means that Moajo uh, is uh, um, putting wisdom 
into the child's head. It's making children more intelligent. And I will later explain why. Um, yeah, so um, if, for example, uh, okay, I will, I, will, I will move now on to talk more about how much unfolds, how, how it looks in detail, how the performance feels. Um, so, it can be planned, but it's very rare, it's mostly spontaneous, and it is usually prompted by the sudden presence of the person in question. So, um, I don't know if somebody would now enter the, the room that I know that I need to I need to laugh about, I would say to Jerome, I would signal to Jerome that we can start. But the actual performance is, uh, is an improvisation. It's, um, I've never encountered that uh, people would be thinking of how exactly they would, they would uh, take the topic. Um, so, the performers are mostly elderly women and wi uh, widows. That's what uh, Jerome uh, wrote in his publications. I've also encountered with uh, frequent performances of, of uh, so-called disadvantaged women, in a way disadvantaged because they were, for instance, uh, without husbands and with a lot of children, or they, uh, uh, they had some sort of uh, physical problems, they were sick or something like that. Um, but uh, it is not only about women. Men can perform moacha as well. It's only that uh, when men do it, it's, it is more causing later noise and more conflict and violence. It is, it is not as when women do it. Um, but uh, in general, imitating somebody else's behavior is one of, one of the most... Uh, it's, it's a basic basis of uh, benjamin's of humor. If I want to make you laugh, I would imitate you. That's how I will do it. <laughs> I will show you, for example, here is a short video. <laughs> This is just a short, vi short video of Ben Baunole. I, I don't, I'm not sure if you could see it very well. It's not really good quality, but uh, he's imitating um, uh, one video clip of a popular Congolese song, where how they dance there. Um, okay, um, so when uh, the performance starts, um, or for example, if I start to perform and I would uh, want that somebody join me, I would say, Jerome, Beke, like or Kabenda uh, Gofe, or give me like a, uh, let's uh, like a join me or or uh, show your thing or share your thing, and so on. Um, but also, um, it is important to know when to finish performing ridicule. It is very important to stop at the moment when the person in question already understands that. Uh, his or her behavior were was silly or wrong or stupid, and uh, in such cases, it is sometimes uh, very loudly said by elderly women, who say like "Stop, enough, that's enough. Uh, it, it, it doesn't need to be, uh, it doesn't need to continue." So, uh, the role of the audience—I call it audience, but it's. The, the, it's really blurred. Like anyone can join in, and uh, uh, anyone can stop performing if they want to. <coughs> uh, but uh, uh, this audience needs to be very loud and active. If there is no response of uh, those people who are watching this performance, it would even cease before uh, it's, uh, it's fulfilling its uh, purpose. So audience is really, really active. And uh, if, for example, my presentation was a. Uh, can't breathe. If this presentation was uh, Moajo, then he would have to say, um, Dasha, you're, you're doing great. Yeah, go on, come on, say it again. How did you say it? Say it again. Oh, that's so good. Or Jerome would come here and he would say, uh, that he, he can take over my presentation and join in. You know, all this kind of... <laughs> you can do it, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. 
but audience also communicates with the audience. So again, if this is Moajo, you would talk loudly to each other, say, Dasha is doing so good, this presentation is awesome, you know, and, you know all these kind of comments. So it would, it, would, it would seem like very loud and very overlapping. It would not be, this, there would not be this barrier of audience and performance, it's not strict. Another, um, another thing that accompanies these, uh, these um, performances, these performances are often uh, almost pantomimic. Like uh, people don't have to say, when they act with their bodies, they don't have to say much. But it is often accompanied by uh, sounds that uh, linguists could refer as ideophones and expletives. But this is, for example, these are examples of uh, sounds um, uh, from uh, one performance mocking uh, that somebody stole plantains. So you can see, um, I will show you, there is just one sound I have here that I can play, this ngue. That's a sound of like a surprise. <laughs> or, yeah, so you can see that um, there is this kwa, ba, whoa, ehe, 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 and so on. <laughs> um, but there are many more sounds, uh, such sounds, and they are present also in different uh, forms, not only in, in Gano, but uh, not only in, uh, in Moajo, but uh, for example in Sang Fables Gano, which you have, by the way, uh, seen uh, in the video uh, with that orange fire there. Not the white fire, but the orange one. <laughs> and um, this, um, just a second, this, this sound, um, According to Kilian Hatz, who was uh, working with, uh, with Baka hunter-gatherers, who are also belonging to uh, um, Yaka Pygmies, they, um, um, Kilian Hatz has mentioned that these, these sounds are helping um, everyone present to get uh, that feeling of here and now. It's sort of a transportation and like relieving the story again. So it uh, makes uh, it makes this experience more like realistic. Or how can we on the reactions to Moajo? Um, well, the ideal the ideal reaction when somebody is laughing at you is to laugh, but not everyone can do that, right? Not everybody is ready to laugh at himself just after being ridiculed. But to show at least some sort of acknowledgement uh, that. Uh, your actions were wrong or silly are, are enough. For example, if you're hiding or running away, that's okay. You will, they would stop to <laughs> laugh at you. But, you know, what happens if you react in a, in a so-called inappropriate way? If you're sad or you're crying or if you're aggressive or upset and stubborn and even start to complain about the performance then then um, your suffering is only prolonging because uh, usually the performance would continue with their performance and <laughs> they, but they would usually switch uh, from uh, ridiculing the action that you have done now they would uh, instead focus on your emotion now they will ridicule your sad face or you know they would uh, they would look at you um, with an aggressive face or whatever, but they would they would continue and you would feel more pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so far I have been talking about what I called normative moajo. Uh, normative moajo is uh, is uh, targeting. Um, sorry, I am drinking tonight. <coughs> The main, uh, the main goal of the normative moajo is to deliver a moral lesson. Uh, your behavior was bad and this is what you get. And it is necessary that that person who is in the uh, question is present and has to feel these emotions. Um, these, are, these are examples of uh, what, what was the most, um, what was the contact or what was 
what uh, people were ridiculing through uh, normative margin. Uh, issues of non-sharing, greediness, selfishness, people who were dishonest, they were cheating, um, they were lazy, arrogant, boastful, careless, and you can see there is more. Here is, here is one, uh, one example. Um, Bilo uh, is a name for the farming population of from that uh, village that I have mentioned. It is um, it is how Benjela refer to these farmers. Bilo. Um, uh, can you read it? Is it isn't it too small? Yeah, it's best if you read it out. I think. Are you sure? <laughs> um, Okay, Bilo employed several men to hunt an elephant, and in exchange, Benjela received palm wine, plantains, cassava, and clothing. A fella, as well as other women, got very drunk. There was lots of singing, joking, and chatting, and at one point, A fella gave her machete to her mother, Buma, after Buma's complaints that her machete is too old. Uh, elderly people have their own ways of complaining. Uh, she would uh, go on and on about how her machete is not good anymore and what everything she could do with the new one and so on. The next day people woke up uh, hungover and soon Afela found out that her machete was missing. She furiously entered in each hut and eventually found it hidden under Buma's bed. Afela was very upset and put up a fight with Buma. With no effect, other women tried to explain that she gave machete to Buma yesterday. It took an hour till she finally calmed down. In the afternoon, women began their moajo. In an exaggerated way, they were pulling each other's hair, running one after another, entering in the huts, throwing things around. <laughs> one of them even pretended to cry. The performance took about five minutes when Afla began to laugh loudly. <laughs> So this exaggeration is also very important um, and very common, uh, commonly present within these performances. So you, know, you, th you feel like I was ridiculed so many times and I felt uh, sometimes that it wasn't fair because I didn't feel that it was so bad, I didn't behave that badly, you know, and th it, feels really, it feels really bad and they enjoy exaggerating it. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, before uh, moving on to another type of moajo that I'm um, going to present, I would like to uh, spend a little bit more time to talk about uh, Benjela female groups, because they are special. And, um, and that, that could be, uh, well, this is, a, this is a table of some sort of uh, manifestations of uh, their group solidarity. And um, first, this frequent touch, intimacy, and closeness. First time when I w uh, when I got uh, to the field and I have um, met Benjela women for the first time, I was uh, shocked how um, how close next to me they were sitting and how they were touchy and intimate, and how the first question, well, well with the help of interpreter at the time. Uh, the first question was like, my husband is rubbish, how is yours? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> that was quite... But after, after, after a certain period of time, like, uh, well, very quickly actually, I found out that it's, uh, it's actually an uh, icebreaker. You just go straight to the point, you talk about your husband right away, you don't need to talk about weather or anything else. <laughs> so, it was, um, but it, it was really bonding as well. It's like, um, uh, why, to be pre why to pretend when you meet somebody, why, why to pretend uh, something, just let's, let's be how we are. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's what's uh, really special about these women, that I felt always uh, great with them and that I could be myself even though they could ridicule if I'm too much myself. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, uh, Benjela women spend most of their time together. They uh, work together, they call it, we work, we work a lot. They gather, they hunt uh, small animals, uh, they do lots of fishing. And some of them have also uh, small farms, so they, they work there as well. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that they work together. They, they, they do it together also with, with the children. Men spend time separately uh, from men, from the women, and uh, they are more individualistic. Um, they they have their own ways. They are also very calm and quiet. They're boring. I was uh, I was better off with the women. Um, so the cooperation is not only uh, within the work, but uh, also when it comes to uh, childcare. They breastfeed each other's children, they take care of their beauty, they, um, they are very, um, they are sharing the childcare. And they are very actively protecting each other against male violence. And not only uh, physical violence, which is actually very rare, but um, any sort of violence or dispute, even I have, what I have encountered with, was that even even in those, within those disputes of marital uh, when a husband and wife were um, were having a public <laughs> public fight uh, dispute, um, women even if they thought that uh, the woman was wrong, they would always say that it's not true that woman is right and that's it. <laughs> they would just always uh, protect each other no matter what. And uh, but also. They, they could uh, find in each other's uh, hut refuge in case of uh, actual real violence. If, uh, for example, husband got very drunk and got aggressive, um, there was always a sister or mother who she could go with children. Um, yeah, um, they, take a, they, they, uh, they take care of each other's beauty as well. So, for example, while it is now quite common to have mirrors, they would not use them because um, they don't need them. They have each other to do their hair and, uh, and to do their makeup. There is a lot of cooperation with, uh, within this. Um, also, when I, when I have, um, when we, for example, traveled, we walked uh, um, through the forest and went to dif visit different communities with, uh, with my informants, uh, with the women. Uh, when we met uh, other women, we were exchanging uh, little personal possessions also. Apart from talking really intimate stuff, we also exchanged bracelets and this kind of stuff. There was this sort of uh, solidarity in between women, even though they didn't know each other. <coughs> Most of the time, uh, whether it is during actual working, for example, gathering or fishing, um, they spent uh, time chatting, gossiping, um, joking and mocking. And uh, there is one more special thing they engage in and uh, uh, it is that they are often synchronized in their responses and um, I will play you this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, this was actually, uh, I don't know if to call it chorus thing or how exactly to call this, but uh, this uh, happened after um, the group of women uh, persuaded men to go hunt for elephant, and it was like a triumph or something because they didn't have they didn't have meat for a long time at the time. Yeah, these are some pictures of uh, makeup session. Um, yeah. So another module uh, I call coalitionary, going back to the ridicule topic. Um, it is when within these female groups, um, uh, women engage in, uh, in ridiculing something, what they share, they think about something or somebody. For example, um, we as a group, uh, we are all ragists, or how do you call it? Um, if we we belong, we are all rag, right? Yeah. Oh, right. And uh, ragists, rags, raggers, raggers. So <laughs> us as raggers uh, could perform um, 
uh, a performance, a mojo about those non-ruggers and what we think about them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I don't know if you have noticed, uh, coalitionary sort of march of performance happened in the video. So, on the left, that was, but which do you think, which, which, oh yeah. Which one do you think is a, was a mojo and which one was the, was a real performance? I don't know. I mean, one was a parody, one was mocking, uh, ridiculed version, and another one was serious. And which one was which? What do you think? Two male groups mocking a male female. Yes, yes, exactly. So this was example of coalitionary mojo, but this was a coalition of men. Yeah. And they're making fun of women. They are making fun of what they think about this sexy, looting, dancing game. So it's not, it, it's not about, um, they are not ridiculing women or they are not ridiculing somebody as, uh, in particular, but they were ridiculing, ridiculing uh, the way how people dance and also you could see the, the voices, yeah. I can play it again later. And this is another example. So, um, so these are Bilo, the farmer women, and they came to visit me. I was just uh, going outside uh, to get some supplies, and they came to visit me and tell me what everything, what all kinds of gifts I should buy them. And they were in a very good mood. They were just these two two women, and they were dancing. And uh, their dancing style was just to show me their buttocks and and <laughs> I don't know and. Um, as soon as as soon as they left, uh, women began to imitate them. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see the face there. Well, basically, it was uh, um, so loud and so funny. That's so they were. Okay, and the last uh, type of uh, moacho that I'm going to talk about, I call gender competition, which is uh, about uh, mocking uh, male sexuality, which is, which is, <laughs> because uh, among among ben, uh, Benjela women, men are really so weak when it comes to. Uh, controlling their sexual desire, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, and they and they uh, they believe that uh, that is one of the sources. Uh, well, that that's that that they can easily use it for themselves and for their children, and uh, it is very often targeting these uh, um, highly. Uh, I don't know. I've, I know it only in my language to say that. I'm not gonna say it, but it's <laughs> um, these sort of performances often uh, happen uh, during female ritual uh, performances, or after, or before, before them, and um, it is it is uh, at those times it is really scary for the men to be around. So they they often know that this is how actually they, they said it. Uh, I'm very afraid, I, I'm going away. Like this is too wild. And um, um, it also, um, this sort of performances also happen as a uh, response to an insult. So for example, if a man would cheat on a, um, his wife and she could, uh, she got enraged and she's actually uh, quite aggressive and and upset women try to soothe her in a way that they engage in a in this ridiculed uh, in this uh, more performance that is still using uh, for example uh, nudity um, and they're kind of vulgar in a way that they imitate the 
uh, the sexual intercourse and that they uh, swear a lot and so on. Um, yeah. Yeah, Afela is laughing about how she refused sex to her husband because of his bad smell and laziness in providing meat. But now he smells nicer, he returned with meat and she will cook his penis tonight also because her <laughs> vagina is hungry. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is one of the examples of how uh, female conversations in the group uh, can, can look like. And this, uh, this, uh, this is like a perfect scenario for, for Moaja to unfold and you can imagine how how they can imitate uh, his uh, dirty penis and so on. Um, yeah, one thing on on on, one, on the one hand, women would claim that they don't uh, that that the men are just uh, too easy, but at the same time, they would um, spend so much time in uh, making themselves beautiful and they, uh, they would uh, deny that they would like to be beautiful for their men, but they engage in lots of lots of activities to accomplish that. Uh, for example, this woman has, uh, if, you, if you can see on her arm, there are kind of shiny uh, circles on her skin. I don't know if it's visible. Mm -hmm. So it's called pata pata. Pata means a coin. So they actually use a lighter to burn their skin to appear more beautiful. This is actually not from the, the village that I, uh, that I have stayed in, but this is, this is the village I have visited and uh, they said that uh, that's really beautiful and sexy. And on the, uh, another picture that, is, um, that, uh, that I see uh, that this girl was using a lot of uh, oil uh, to make her skin look shiny. Shininess is very important for feeling of sexiness and fatness, which is all sexy. And women are also using uh, all kinds of uh, pigments to make themselves beautiful. Um, here are just a few examples. Um, another thing is that they, they make their babies looking beautiful, because they want their husbands to, to see them as more beautiful and provide more. There are some, yeah, there are some eyebrow makeup. <laughs> Apart from uh, Moaja, there are other techniques for uh, women to get what they want from men. And it is because they are so strongly together that they can really get what they want. And they, got, they go uh, on strike. They refuse. Uh, they are capable of refusing sex together as a you know, well. At least they talk to each other that they refuse sex. I didn't see or verify that, but um, or they refuse. Uh, they refuse to work. That happened many times actually. That um, we were in the forest camp and uh, women were very upset that they are all the time working so much and men are just laying around and they are, they do not provide. So they decided to stay in. And men were asking like. Uh, we are not going to eat today. So now, did you hunt anything or what? <laughs> so they stayed all together in the camp and they, uh, they did wait till the men very silently left uh, for and do some hunting. And it works. <laughs> and uh, if uh, some men are really bad, it is necessary to poison them, but just <laughs> enough. <laughs> just enough. <laughs> Um, so that uh, they would not die, they would not pass away, but uh, that they would feel really bad. <laughs> and um, yeah, for example, there is medicine to make a husband's heart pound so quickly that we, he will, uh, you know, th he will feel so dizzy because of love and secure his return. Um, yeah, also when they want to know the truth, why they don't want to go hunt, there is a plan for that. You cook it into the meal, and you, he will tell the truth. Maybe he is cheating on you or something. Um, and there is this verbal persuasion, and well, that's very open. They say mean, meat can resolve conflict <laughs> in general, not only with women, but with everybody. So they should go and, and hunt. 
and uh, that oh, many times uh, children are brought up that uh, they would get sick and hungry. That they need that meat as well. Um, just a second, please. There are also some other techniques uh, in, uh, and this is what I would like to um, just return to this beauty issue. It is that um, even though there are recognized differences in, uh, in the female beauty, that there are people who are perceived as more beautiful and than others or attractive, more attractive than others, it is possible to change it. And it is possible to change it, for example, through drinking certain uh, teas or uh, you can uh, <coughs> apply a perfume and you will feel beautiful. You can feel beautiful uh, if you have scars on your face, you can feel the same beautiful if you have, I don't know, if you're missing limb, doesn't matter. So th there was this, uh, there was this body positivity uh, feeling that was so strong among the women that that uh, was also very inspiring and it was very hard to go back here. <laughs> yeah. uh, there are also, children have also their moacho. Children have also uh, their way of ridiculing. Either each other or adults, doesn't matter, they do and can ridicule. And um, this is an example, for example, um, there was a group of young girls who imitated one elderly man. This man was known for his passion for alcohol. <coughs> the girls were imitating his clumsy walking and how he would uh, fall on the ground, curse out loud and swing a machete around as if trying to hit an imaginary person in front of him. To begin with, women were laughing as they watched this performance. And after a while, even this old man was laughing. Nevertheless, the girls did not stop their moajo at this point, which annoyed the old man as well as the women. The girls stopped only after being scolded by one of the most senior women in the group, who was looking for a stick on the ground to throw at them. The girls carried on laughing and, pretending to be very afraid, <coughs> ran into the forest. Yeah, so this is quite typical. So, girls um, are laughing at uh, some older elderly drunker, and uh, they don't know when to stop. And um, other women make them uh, make them feel th when it's enough. And this is within this interaction, you can see how how these uh, not only elderly women, but uh, any adults or any, anybody else can engage in teaching others how to perform uh, moacho well. Because it is not funny to laugh at somebody who already laughed at himself, you know. And um, so um, there is also moajo among children. They mock each other almost all the time. But uh, the the content of the of their um, of the ridicule of the of what, what what they're mocking about is often uh, harsher than in in the case of uh, adults. For example, they would uh, they would laugh about each other's differences, which is uh, contrary to the adults' uh, perspective, uh, which is actually respecting and highlighting the importance of being different and to be uh, you know to be original in a way. Um, if somebody, mm, I know that there was, for example, one boy who appeared to, to other kids as darker, so they called him black. Mm -hmm. You know, all these kind of these kind of physical differences or differences in uh, in in their, for example, performances in their um, I don't know hunting and gathering skills. So adults do not mock each other's uh, skills. Uh, Adults do not focus on um, laughing at um, somebody's uh, way of doing things neither. It is about, about creating noise and creating problems for others and it is about violence, it is about being improper in a way that it, it can have a negative impact on the well-being of others but also on the health of others. Um, 
And adults mock children as well. And usually it is uh, about these issues uh, to... Um, they, they mock uh, when they are dependent and they should be already try to be independent. Uh, let me give you an example. <coughs> so, Bemba, Bemba was one of those children who suffered from the weaning period. Uh, interactions of him and his mother were a common discussion in the women's gossip. Mother felt pressure from the women to help Bemba um, um, becoming more independent. Often when Bemba played in children group, um, other children would mock him. He would return back to his mother, sit close to her and reach for her breast and get a little bit of milk. Breastfeeding in general is used by Benjamin mothers to soothe the child. This time, however, the mother refused and she was getting ready for a gathering trip. She stood up and walked across the camp to one of women who were preparing a meal. She would sit close to one of them and reach for her breast. The women and children who were present began to laugh hilariously. Then the mother would go to another woman and repeat the same. Bemba would begin to cry. At that moment, the other women began to mimic him crying with exaggeratedly sad facial expressions. Children were following this cluster of performances with laughter as well, while pointing at Bemba. The boy left a little further from the camp where he sat and continued on crying. No children nor adults came to soothe his cry. So there are several issues here. So within, um, Within uh, Moajo that is uh, addressed from adults to children, adults often face the child, look in the child's uh, eyes, they can even point. Um, it was explained to me that is, it is to make sure that the child understands that the performance is about, about him or her. And it, is also, um, it has also a um, pedagogical uh, function in a way that it teaches the child very directly and quite cruelly uh, the reality of what is expected from him or her. Um, so this was uh, an example of uh, winning, uh, that, that was prom promoting winning. This boy was, this was actually quite a special case. Um, Benjala are very, um, um, you know, uh, winning usually occurs on, on demand of the child, but uh, this boy had already like six or seven years old and uh, it was too much. Even other children were mocking that uh, this was too much, you know, <laughs> like uh, really. And um, uh, yeah, another example is um, when somebody is uh, not uh, sharing. For example, if you see these these uh, these sort these examples, these exam. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> um, if somebody fails to share um, something what is demanded from him or her, then others can um, engage in a module that is mocking this. I have here one example, but that one is not so nice, not so funny. Um, I can tell you another one, <laughs> um, which is um, about um, how women taught a girl, it was a boy, but how to how to deal with the outsiders? And just a second, please. Okay, I have one example where I will just read it and then we talk. Um, one woman came over to visit Buma. Buma was my key informant, uh, an elderly woman. She was seeking help to treat her issues with potential ecology. Oh, I would uh, say problem with uh, 
uh, with her pregnancy. We were camping in the forest. Men were away working, so there were only women and children in the camp. This woman came with her child, a girl of about three years old. After a brief exchange of news, Buma suggested her to speak between the four eyes. And so they left to the forest, but the woman left the baby with us. As soon as the mother left, the baby started to cry. Firstly, women tried to soothe her by singing at her loudly, but it didn't help. I wanted to be of some help, so I approached the baby and mimicked what other women did. But the baby was obviously scared of me and cried even more loudly. And so Mosangi started a moajo. Mosangi was one of the women present there. She came closer to me and suggested to Sarah soothe her as if she was a baby. She lay in my lap and I began to tap her arm rhythmically while trying to yodel <laughs> as the Vangela women do. Mosangi was crying and screaming and repeatedly looked at the baby. She stopped crying and just stared with a surprised look. Soon, <laughs> Buma and the mother returned. Mosangi did not hesitate and recounted on what had happened. <coughs> the mother found it extremely funny and started another mod herself. And so she came to me, lay in my lap and cried. <laughs> All women <laughs> were laughing wildly and switched uh, their looks from the mother to the baby and back. When the mother had finished her performance, she went to the baby and told her, Mendele, bene badie bien. White people, they are good. <laughs> she pointed at me, grabbed the baby's hand uh, with the palm upwards as if begging and further explained. Ove fofanani, kabame mungwa. You talk to her, give me salt. So this is one of the, one of the examples of uh, how Benjamin women teach about how to deal with the outsiders. And it also, also shows what they think about those outsiders mm -hmm. as well. Yeah.